Okay. Good afternoon, everybody. And first of all, a a thank uh, decorum, please. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. And first of all, a thank you to Steve Buxbaum, who graciously sponsored sponsored who graciously sponsored uh, today's lunch and learn. Yes, and, and I do ask uh, to pl uh, please keep in mind the you know the the possibility of sponsoring <coughs> to help cover cover the costs. Of the uh, of the lunch that is served. <coughs> Amen. Okay. So a topic that's been very much in the news is uh, suicide and uh, death with dignity, as the proponents are labeling it, which by uh, which of course seems to indicate that if one doesn't take that course, it could almost seem to be death without dignity, which is clearly a, a, a stacking of the deck um, in terms of the perspective that one has with it. So I'd like to, to divide today's, today's uh, Lunch and Learn into three, three different parts. The first part will be the halacha, the Jewish law, in regard to this. The second will be uh, a, an understanding, an attempt to understand why, why this law is as it is, and then to go into some of the practical applications of the halacha as it follows through in terms of what is done in a case of, tragically, when a suicide does take place. So let's begin with the Torah law on it, right? First I'm going to read a pasuk and the Rashi on that, and then we will go on to the source sheets. We'll start with the Rambam, Maimani's Laws of Murder. But before that, we're just going to read the pasuk upon which the Rambam is based. The Rambam says, well, the Pasuk, sorry, says, Hashem blessed Noah and his children told him to uh, be numerous, fill the land, populate the land, and your fear will be on the animals of the earth, etc. Ach basar v'nafsho damo lo tochelu. The Pasuk says, flesh with its soul, its blood, you shall not eat. At this point, Noah was given permission to eat animals, to be carnivorous. Adam and the world of Adam were not allowed to partake of, of animals in terms of consumption. Now, they can, now we can. However, not basar benafsho, not what we call avram and achai, not, it, it, it cannot be uh, taken apart while it is alive. It must first go through the proper shechita, etc. And here we go. Pasuke, this is Perak Tes, Pasuke. Ba'ach et dimchem, Lenafshotechem Edrosh, your blood, which belongs to your souls, Edrosh, I will demand it. Miad Kol Chaya Edrashana, from any beast, I will demand it. Umiyad Ha'adam, and from the hand of a man. Miad Ish Achiv Edrosh. Et nefesh ha'adam. From the hand of a man and his brother, I will demand the nefesh of the person. Shofech dam ha'adam ba'adam damoy shofech. Anyone who sheds the blood of a man, his blood shall be, he shall be shed. Keep it selim elokim asayet ha'adam. Because in the image of God, man has been made. Rashi says, Lenafsho teichem, your blood for your soul. Ach, af hachonek. I'm sorry. Vach dimchem, even though you're allowed to take the neshama of an animal, et dimchom edrosh me'ashofech dam atzma. One will be held liable for being shofech 
dam atzma. If a person were to take one's own life, to shed one's own blood, one will be held responsible. Let's see how Rambam brings this down in halacha. That's the sheets that you have in the very first page. You have it both in Hebrew and in English. Follow along as you feel most comfortable. Aval hasocher horeg larog et chavero. If one hires someone to kill someone else, o sheshalach avadav, or sends one of his servants varguhu and kills him, o shekafto or he bound him up and leaves him in front of a lion to be killed, the Chayotzibo, Vaharagtaho, and he was killed. Chayim's animal killed him. et atzmo. And so too, if one were to kill oneself. Each one of these cases is categorized, is considered Shofech Damim Hu it is considered that they have shed blood. Vavon hariga biado v'chayev mita l'shamayim v'ein bahen mitat beitim. The sin of murder is in his hand that is punishable by death and it is a heavenly, a heavenly uh, death that is meted out. There is no execution by the court. The Rambam in Halacha Gimel, Halacha 3, goes on, Uminayin shekein hu adin, from where do we derive that this is in fact the law, shenemar, shof ech dam ha'adam ba'adam, damo yishafech. One who spills the blood of the person by the person, his blood will be spilled, ze ha'oreg ba'atzmo shelo al yidei shliach. That is a person who does the killing himself without involving anyone else. Ach et dimchem l'navshotechem, your blood for your nefesh I will demand, ze ha-horeg atzmo, that is one who kills oneself. Miyad kol chayet roshena, from every animal, from, from, from the beast I will demand it, ze ha-mose chaver l'fnei chayel u-tarfo, that's saying if you put, you, you, you place, your friend in front of an animal and bound him up for an animal and thereby bring about, orchestrate his death, right? In all those cases, I hire others to to kill. In all those cases, the, the, the punishment is given over to the heavens. The Beitin does not get involved. Now, certainly in the case, I mean, there are those that ask, and I want to thank Rabbi Yoshua Pfeffer, who has a very, very a good um, website where he goes through many of the halachos and a lot of the sources I've drawn from there. So he brings, he brings from the clay chemdo, or clay chemda probably, that, that clearly um, there, there was no notion that the Beit Din would put to death someone who killed himself. <laughs> it's a little too late for that, yes. right? But there could be a situation where a person gave himself the status of death, meaning by wounding himself in such a way that it's just a matter of time that he dies. But either way, in all these situations, it is left to the heavens. But killing oneself is considered murder. Killing oneself is considered murder. And we see over here that the Torah's prohibition is not that we have no right to take away someone else's life, but rather it's that we have no right to take away a life. Not, not, not limited to someone else's life. We have no right to take away a life. And we'll soon get into more of an understanding of that. Let's go just a little bit further. Yes, Steve? About the animal. Um, an ox that is known to gore um, is put to death, right? An ox that is known to gore and that then kills a person. Right. Yes. Um, but, but this case of animals, is, is, is that... Is there no. 
the According to the Rambam, this is talking about the din that if a person <coughs> orchestrated, then an animal will kill someone. Right? That's how the Rambam is learning that. So, so the animal wouldn't be put to death for, for in, under these circumstances. I'm not sure. No, I'm not sure. Okay. Isn't it questionable that there would be no execution by the court for people who are engaged in plotting murder but don't actually commit it? Oh, so you're saying if I hire someone, why yeah. shouldn't I? Yeah. Okay. So, so the the bait din only will execute someone for what they do be a dying with their hands. Okay? Now, that's not necessarily a leniency. Now, it's interesting to note this. Every, every legal system wants to be, you know, bullseye, right on. But no legal system can be. So every legal system really needs to decide, are we going to be innocent until proven guilty? We're going to be guilty until proven innocent. Which way are we going to lean? The Torah, the Torah system leans very strongly towards exoneration. And the reason is that there is the safety net of God, that no one will get away with it. So we'll err on the side, of, the Torah instructs us, sets up the parameters, they will err on the side of exonerating a guilty person. Now, there's also the idea that the, the, the capital punishment that a Beit Din does give out, that is automatic um, if a person goes through the whole process properly, that is a cleansing, atoning process. <laughs> so there are times that a person is too bad for the capital punishment. So. Well, the point I want to say, Colin, is it's not clear that, oh, it's not so bad if, if one does that. It means that's out of the jurisdiction of the Beit Din. Will it be better for the person or worse for the person? That already Do is, they do nothing or do they just withhold execution? They will withhold execution. But they do um, punish. I, I'm not sure. The, 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 the Rambam does speak about that there are these, um, you know, baiting, if they see situations are unraveling, then they could take like these uh, extra legal steps that are not necessarily prescribed in order to keep things in order. I imagine that would, that would be applied over here if it needs to be applied. Yeah. I don't, I don't know if this is the, the Eid Shecher. Uh, if, if people um, give testimony, falsely, then they, it gets done to them what, what would have been done. Correct. There, there is a kind of Adam's omen also. Yeah. Yeah. It's Rabbi also just, interesting, sorry. It's also very interesting that there are no exceptions. Was the Rambam also a med a yes. medicine? Yes. In a situation where you have somebody who is really terminally ill and there's only suffering and no hope. Okay. So we're going to come to all of that. Yeah. We're going to come to all of that. Yeah. Yeah. I don't want to belabor the point, but um, the person who plans and plots and uses the physicality of someone else to accomplish the actual killing is morally even more responsible that's than what the I'm, person that, who kills. That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. But the to, the to fact say that, that the Beitin won't, won't do anything and it's left to Shemayim to the heavens does not, necessarily, not, does not necessarily mean he's getting off easier. It might, be, it might be he's going to get worse. Okay, but if he, for instance, doesn't believe in God and he believes in uh, crime, uh, this is he'll the have right a place he'll, to he'll, do it. He'll, he'll, have have a rude, a, he'll have a rude awakening. <laughs> yeah, but he, he, while he's alive, he'll have a free pass. Um, possibly. Yeah. Possibly. Okay. The Rambam, in his Hilchos Teshuva, in the Laws of Repentance, lists Elu She'ein Lehem Chelek L'Olam Haba. The following forfeit their portion. They do not have their portion in the world to come. Ela Nichratim. Their souls are cut off. V'ovdin. And are lost. V'nidonin al goldu v'sham echatatam l'olam l'olmei olamin. And they are held accountable forever. 
right? I quote from the Torah, denial, those who deny the Torah, umachtiye harabim, those who cause others to sin, v'hamosrin, those who, uh, be, uh, in, in the English here, they betray the Jews to Gentile authorities, right? Uh, now, we're not talking about if someone does something wrong, right? We're not talking in a case of, an, uh, of abuse, we need to call the authorities. But we're talking about where either you're making up things or you are, you are letting them know that they're doing things which, they, which their punishment is going to go crazily beyond. You know, th- think Soviet Union, Letting, this, letting the, 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 the authorities know that there's a hidden mikvah in this person's house. Think along those lines. V'shovche damim ubali lashon hara. Right? Those who are shovche damim, those who spill blood, and the Rambam already clarified. Spilling blood includes, includes spilling one's own blood. Okay, Ubali Lashon Hara, which are those who are, not those who speak Lashon Hara, that, that's all of us at, at one point or another, oh, yeah. but a Bali Lashon Hara means he's the Baal, he's the owner of that. He, uh, that, uh, that, that defines who he is and what he does. Yeah. The Lama Yeah, that, that, yeah, that, that is correct. That, relate to this. that is correct. The bracha of, of Lama Shinim is going on those who betray us. Correct. Sorry, Dove? The medical guy is delivering blood to, to the lab and he's still it and he's liable now for. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah. Okay. So, what is clear is that the prohibition here is not against taking someone else's life, the prohibition is against taking life. A life. <clears throat> Let's take a look at Pirkei Avot, and then let's discuss this a bit. And that applies only to human beings. Mm-hmm. Correct. Correct. So if you give your dog out for euthanasia, that's okay. Yes. Yes. Uh, you know, we, we'll discuss that. We'll discuss it. But yes, um, so, uh, years ago, someone had written to me, Rabbi, how come we do a mercy killing for a horse, but not for a human being? Okay. Who are Omer, as Rabbi Loza would say, I believe, Hayeladim Lamut, Vametim Lachayot, Vachayim Lidon, Leida Ulohodia, Uloda Shehu Kel, who are Yotzer, who are Bore, who are Maven, who are Dayan, who are Aid, who Baldin, who are Tid Ladun, Borachu Shein Lefanavlo Ava, Lo Shikhavalo Masuponivlo Mekakshochad, the Dasha Kol, the Fia Heshbon. Those who are born will die and the dead will live. The living will be judged to learn, to teach, to comprehend that he is God. He is. God is the former. He is the creator, the comprehender, the judge, the witness, the plaintiff, the judge. Blessed is he, for before him there is no wrong, no forgetting, no favoritism, no taking of bribes. Know that everything is according to the reckoning. Let not your heart convince you that the grave is your escape. For against your will you are formed, against your will you are born, against your will you live, against your will you die, and against your will you are destined to give a judgment and accounting for the King, King of all kings, the Holy One, blessed be He. Life. Life. And when it comes to that last sheet in a, in, a, in a little while. It takes a little while to work our way through there. Life is a gift that is given to us. Life is not then fully ours. We have no ability to create life. With all of science, I'm wrong? Science has been able to duplicate <coughs> creation of life? No, no, I, I meant a little bit. I meant normal um, <coughs> reproductive process. Reproduction. <laughs> uh, okay. 
Let's see you start from scratch and do that. It always struck me, and, and I like to hear, you know, uh, you know, we have some scientists here, we have, we have doctors here. It always strikes me that I'm not sure how best to word this. There used to be this, this notion of spontaneous generation. Am I correct? Lamarckian. Right? You know, that we used to think that, you know, the stuff in the dung will, will spontaneously, right, generate, right? And now we say, that's ridiculous. That's primitive. There's no way that that happens. Rather, there are microscopic, uh, you know, whatever, eggs, life forms there, but there is no such thing as spontaneous, spontaneous generation. Yet, the entire science world, if we take God out of the equation, says, how, how did life begin? A methane environment, at least on Earth. <laughs> Fair enough. But there was some form of spontaneous generation. Right? right? There was, taking God out of the equation, there was some point of spontaneous generation. So that which we say is impossible, is impossible, is impossible, it doesn't happen, it can't happen, you just don't know what actually was there, and we, and we sort of mock those who thought that there was spontaneous generation. In fact, the whole world and every, the, the plethora of life forms that, the, the, that this earth is teeming with, no matter where you go, the bottom of the ocean, the top of the mountains, and the cracks between the concrete, that, you know, th th that this earth is teeming with life, the only explanation that science has is spontaneous generation. That, that always struck me as somewhat... Yosef, am, am I wrong on this? Yosef? Am I wrong on this? No. Right? It always stri strikes me just how th th this glaring contradiction that exists. But the point that I want to bring out here, life is something that is so beyond us. Now, as Colin said, so why are we going to differentiate between a human being and and any other living creature? And that, and, and that mosquito that's been driving me mad and oh, now I feel good. Right? It's not going to eat me up anymore. Though the mosquitoes are smart. They go for Natalie. They don't go for me. She's much sweeter. But I still feel good. They shouldn't go for her anymore. Right? And, and the idea is that a human being, as the Torah teaches us, Vayitzer, <laughs> with two yuds, there were two formings, we are a physical being and we are a spiritual being. And and we are cognizant of our physical life and our physical self. And if we were to only be a physical self, then in fact, like by the animals, it would be considered an act of mercy to put them out of their suffering. And that, in fact, is what the Torah, the, the idea of tsar, bali chayim, not causing anguish to any living creature, and if they are in a state of anguish, then delivering them from that state, that is either a Torah or a rabbinic precept. It's argued exactly what level is it. But certainly that is a fundamental Jewish precept. But when it comes to a human being, where our understanding is, right, as it said in Brekavos, against your will, you are formed. Why is that? From a Torah perspective, the neshama, the soul, was in the heavenly realm. And it's going to come down into this earth where it's going to have challenges and the possibility, the potential of a transformative growth experience. But at the same time, there's also the potential for bad choices, 
to be made, which is the very definition of bring, being in a free will environment. And therefore, it's a bit of a gamble. And against our will, we are formed. Against our will, we are born. This neshama, the soul, is here, and then the neshama goes back to its place. We don't create that neshama. We don't give the amount of time for life. And for us to end our own or someone else's life before its time is entering into a realm which is, which is tragic because we're acting without the knowledge of what is next, without the knowledge of why life is so precious, why even, even, chas v'shalom, we, we dive and we do our best that no one should have to go through this, but even if one is going through the pain and uh, tremendous, tremendous pain and agony, we'll do whatever we need to do to alleviate their pain, but we don't, we don't end their life. And, and when we hear the stories like have been in the news, right, so we say, oh, but the person was suffering like this, this was their end. Uh, a, a thought that I had. And, and, and we're tempted to not look at that as being tragic. Right? And it's being painted as death with dignity. Now, imagine Imagine a kindergarten child comes home from school, had a rough day. Kids were mean to me. Teacher didn't listen to me. Right? A terrible day in the life of a kindergarten. And the child decides, I'm going to end it right then and there. What would our reaction be? You have no idea what life holds in store for you. You have no idea the, the richness of life, the, the beauty, the depth of experiences that await you as you go through your kindergarten years, year, hopefully no matter how bad those days might be, right? Of course, that would be the most horrific, tragic thing we could imagine because the child has no idea what's up ahead. So how can that child make that decision? Or how could we even dream of respecting that decision when that child has no idea what are the ramifications, what are the repercussions of that decision, has no idea that which they are forfeiting as a result of that decision. Well, the same thing applies to us as adults vis-a-vis -vis our life and our soul, and our life doesn't end with the barbiturates or whatever it was that she took, that does not end the life. That is the transition from one form of life to another form of life. So a person making that decision from a Judaic Torah point of view is as tragic as a kindergarten child making a decision to end their life. But we understand that that's tragic because the repercussions and that which the child is forfeiting is within the realm of our rememberable experiences. So we see, we know what it is that they are forfeiting and that's what makes it so tragic. The fact that we don't know what they are forfeiting doesn't make it any less tragic. And the Torah, which knows what is on the other side, Therefore, therefore, strictly prohibits it because it is no less tragic than that kindergarten age child. But you can't compare the two. The child, your infant, is not terminally ill. So you're giving an example that 
the child's healthy and everything. He's just got some mental aversion to what his friends told him, but it's not tragic. And a person... But he's, he's not sick. But the point that I'm making is there's this child's life and they have no idea what's coming afterwards. Now, terminally ill, right, means the body is not going to survive much longer here. But is that, does that mean that the end is near? No. It means the transition is near. It means the transition is near. But just like that kindergarten child is going to do something that is going to irreparably alter the future for that child without the understanding of what the future is, so too the terminally, even a terminally ill person is going to take a step that's going to irreparably alter the future without them knowing what that future is. But you also mentioned a physical, you mentioned about animals, for example, being the physical being only. There is also a situation with people where they become physical being only and they are still suffering a lot. So What do you mean they become a physical being only? Unconscious for a long time, totally even that, even that we have no, we have no like idea that. what is going on the with on, on the neshama level. We have no idea. I'm not what, that I'm for. Yeah, I'm, a I'm with you. But I'm saying but we have, we have, we have no idea. We have no, no idea what is going on on that level, on that soul level, yes, right? So. Um, so I, I, would, I, I would not say the person is, at that point, is, is just, yeah, Dove's waiting a little while. Yes, Dove. No, I would say that a person, when they think they're totally in the right mind, they're out of their mind and when they make that decision to do that. Mm-hmm. Perhaps. And yeah. Also, and it, it, it might be that that decision is for short, maybe mm-hmm. the neshama is meant to be with, coupled with the body for a certain amount of time and that person is foreshortening Correct. That, that period. Correct. Yes. And, Correct. And that may be a, a big alteration. Rabbi well. Binyamin uh, Black writes very beautifully. Right? Shouldn't we have compassion for those forced to endure pain? I, 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 you don't have this. I have this. Sorry. My feelings beg me to consider the hardship. My faith reminds me that my concern is assuredly not greater than God's, who is merciful, kind, loving, and yet has still not decreed death at this point on that, on that person. Suicide in the simplest sense is disagreeing with a divine verdict for life. Why should I continue to live when I'm such pain? Why should I go on I'm only a burden to others? Why should I stay the course when the end I desire is an event, is in any event inevitable? And the only comfort that we can find is in God's response to Moshe. <clears throat> When Moshe said, show me your glory, let me understand your ways. And God said, man cannot see me and live. I will pass before you. You will see my back, my face. You shall not see. In other words, we can never fully grasp God's management of the universe. There was a famous story that took place in Shari Chesed Hospital. I believe it took place in Shari Chesed. Years and years ago. So it was written up a while ago of a doctor who was tending to a patient. And this patient was, with all the pain management that they were going through, this patient was undergoing a lot of pain. And it was going to be, if not, if not, if not hours, days. That's it. And this person terminated. This person, as we say, pulled the plug. The, the patient? No. The, the, doctor. the doctor. And, and <clears throat> there's no way of knowing that what I'm going to tell you now happened if this was a true <clears throat> um, message from the heavens or if it was his own tortured conscience that was speaking to him. There's no way of knowing that. But either way, 
this is something that we believe is true. Okay? The message we believe is a true message. Was it that, well, this person came to him in a dream? And again, do we know it was the person coming in a dream or was his own, it was his own conscience? We don't know. But what this doctor wrote, and he ended up becoming a, uh, uh, an observant Jew after this, was this person came to him in a dream and said, how could you have done that to me? I needed just a few more hours of that pained existence on earth in order to cleanse, cleanse me and allow me to go on to the next stage. How did you get involved in something that was not yours, in a realm that you have no idea what it is? Now, again, can I tell you that was the person in a dream and not his conscience? I can tell you. But that is, that is what we believe. It's getting involved, that everything is done. Everything is orchestrated from above. Everything is done for a reason. And, and this is an area, there are certain things that are sanctioned to us. Help the person, heal the person, relieve the pain, allow the person to relieve the pain. Right? And, you know, obviously every case is a, spe- is, a special, is a case, but in general, a person will be allowed to self-administer the morphine if they're in pain. And even if they're in so much pain that they're missing so much morphine that that's going to end up shortening their life, mm-hmm. if they're doing it not to shorten their life, they're doing it to alleviate the pain, right? We do anything and everything we can to alleviate the pain, to heal, to do everything we can, but there's a certain line that we draw that is just beyond, beyond our jurisdiction, that is a realm that goes beyond where we are at. And that is terminating the life of someone else or one terminating one's own life. That is pushing that boundary beyond beyond what we know, right? You know, it's like saying, yeah, yeah, don't worry, jump off the cliff without knowing what's on the other side. You can't, you can't go, yeah, right? <laughs> if I'm there to catch you, it's one thing. But otherwise, otherwise, how does one send oneself or someone else <clears throat> off without knowing what are the repercussions. And that was the, the, the mashal that I had in my mind with, 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 a, with a toddler, with a little kid. They have no idea what the repercussions are, so we would never dream of sanctioning that, of calling that, you know, of, of attaching the word dignity to that. Right? It's, it's, it's folly. It's not dignity, it's folly if one doesn't understand what is the full ramifications. It's not dignity, it's, it's folly. We have some cases where like the Roman guy jumped off the, the roof. Okay, so yeah, well, uh, can we explain that a little? I, bit? I, 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 there's a lot of things that we can go into. I want to try to okay. keep keep yeah. keep to keep keep to the program, mm-hmm. right? But actually, Friday night, I know you probably not going to be a Friday night. Yeah. But Friday night, we have we have time between Mincha and Kabbalah Shabbat. Yeah. That's why I'm going to go through wow. a number of famous <laughs> suicides: Shaul, King Saul, for example, Hannah and her, uh, kind of the mother of her seven sons, right? And those are situations where, where they are not censured for that. And I'm going to uh, go through different approaches to that, but that's not going to be now. Okay. Now, how do we view when tragically there is a suicide? And this is something that's very fascinating. The Shulchan Aruch, the Shulchan Aruch rules, the Code of Jewish Law rules, that, that ma'avet et atzmo ledat, a person who intentionally, willfully takes one's own life, 
There's no mourning. There's no all. There's no all of the normal mourning of a lut practices <clears throat> don't apply. However, the pitre tshuva brings, and certainly nowadays, this is how it's viewed. He brings many. Twelve fifty-five. He brings many mitigating factors. He brings a case. Okay, I'll go into details. A case of someone who, by all, it seems clear, this person committed suicide. He said, we didn't see him actually do it. We didn't actually see him do it. Then he goes on even further and says, V'od yesh loma ruach bilbalto sh'asam mitoch shiga'on. The person was in a state of mind. The person was in a state of mind that he's not going to be held responsible for it. Then he says, perhaps also he did it machmat teshuva, right? He thought, right, not, not that one is allowed to take their life as a, as a form of teshuva, of repentance, but that will certainly allow us to mourn for him, right? If it was a mistaken such notion. He brings family, the, 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 the Besum and Rosh, name of a Sefer, who says it's not considered suicide if a person did it because they felt they were in tremendous, if a person was overcome with difficulties, worries, yisurim, pain, Oh, only gamor, or being impoverished. Again, not to say that in these situations it is allowed, but in these situations, then a person is mourned, and we we under, we understand the mistake that the person made. Not saying that therefore it is allowed but saying in all of those situations now of any suicide today, is it not because of tremendous, either the person emotionally was very, very, uh, well, I, I don't have to always say uh, unstable at that point, distraught. but certainly distressed, distraught, right? In a, in a time of tremendous emotional burden. Reboy tsarosav, a feeling of tremendous amount of sorrow, of difficulties on the person. Dagot worries, yisurim, pain, oni gamar, even physical, materialistic sense of what am I going to do now? And again, not to thereby say in those situations it is acceptable, but in those situations, which I think is every situation nowadays falls into one of those categories, so we do not view it as something that, oh, this was a rebellion against God, and therefore the person will not be mourned and all of the proper mourning and Kaddish, etc., does not go into effect. It certainly, certainly does go into effect. All right, we're, 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 we're getting late already. The last, the last page, take a look at it, if you like, on your own, take a look at it. It's a Gemara which tells about a person who did a, who was, who, who was very involved in Aveiras, right? Very quickly, this person used to, used to visit every possible uh, harlot, right? And then she said something to him that shook him up, and he went then, and he went out to the mountains, and he cried out, mountains, pray on my behalf, and the, the commentators explain that he, right, you know, he was calling out to God, you know, someone help me, help me, help me. And he put his head down and he cried and he cried and he cried until his soul left his body, right? So there are those that want to say, so you see that he very committed suicide as part of teshuva, and that's not necessarily the case at all. It could very mm. simply be that he died from grief. He was just so, so bereft that his soul left him. An important point I wanted to bring out is Rebbe, the great Rebbe Yudanasi, when he heard this story, started to cry and said, Yesh kone olamo b'sha'achat. 
a person can acquire their eternity in one moment. Here's this person who led a life filled with sin to the nth degree, and the very last moment he died with Teshuvah, and the Gemara says a heavenly voice proclaimed that he is, he is ready now to come to enter into paradise, to enter into the world to come. So Rebbe cried how one can acquire their eternity in one moment. And a very beautiful shot that I heard in that is when I had my prava for my position in Muncie, I was told to give, part of, part of my, my, my test Shabbos was to give a one minute of our Torah at Kiddush. They wanted to see if it was possible if a rabbi could possibly do that, speak for a minute. Right? So I, I said over this Gemara, and I said, Rebbe wasn't crying because he, you know, oh, I worked so hard for so many years, and he got it all in a minute. Rebbe was crying about the power of a moment. Right? You see what the power of a moment is, and how many moments do we have in our lifetime that we don't, that we don't maximize. And I think that really... The reason I wanted to bring it, that really comes back to the issue we're discussing today. The power of a moment, right? With all that pain, with all that's going on, you know, the, the difference of eternity, in eternity, that a person's few moments, few last moments on life might afford them with thoughts that they might have and decisions they might have and regrets that they might, whatever it might be. Right? We can be kona olamo b'sha'achat. We can be kona our, our eternity in one moment. Certainly, if those are the stakes during our lifetime here, that is not yeah. something that we can decide to, uh, to play with, to alter. We're dealing with a realm that is so far beyond us. Okay, we'll pull it over here and pick up somewhat tomorrow night. Okay, thank you. Okay,